Good afternoon. I'm Firebox. I want to give some tips that I think will be helpful for new players for the new Twist Mountain Elfbot Rebellion event. I was brand new when I started it, and I played for a few hours last night when the event first dropped, and I feel a little bit more confident. I was able to get up to beating the fourth boss. These aren't going to be specific fighting strategies yet. I am going to give some of my opinions on the elf boss to choose in the beginning and some basic tips just to keep in mind throughout the run but the actual strategy portion is something that might be posted later on by myself or someone else might beat me to it and we'll have the strategy from there it's too early for me to give a full in-depth strategy but i think these tips will help some people that either have been struggling or are brand new and are just getting to this event i definitely would have really appreciated having something like this so let's go ahead and get started First things first, when you first get into the room where the elf bots are being chosen, I would highly recommend choosing two elf bots that have the moves Heal Bell and Heal Pulse. From my experience, having both of these moves is really important because of the limitation of items throughout the team. Being able to heal your team and your allies team's Pokemon Especially with how prevalent status effects are, that can basically ruin a run if you can't heal them, such as Paralyze, Poison, etc. It's pretty important to have. I can give at least one elf bot combination that I was personally using, which was Flying Defense and Psychic Defense. That seemed to work pretty well together. The big thing here is that it doesn't seem like there's any combination of two elf bots that are just good for everything. This is an event that really relies on your teammates. I would recommend having the full squad of four. I know it's a pain, and there's a lot of people that are really not liking the fact that you have to get a full team together. I think it is possible to do with two or three people, but it is definitely faster and more efficient with four. And the ultimate goal is for every single person to have two elf bots that all go well together. And each person can take over the strengths and weaknesses that the other teammate cannot. And this is the really big thing for getting really far into runs. Because PP becomes a really big issue. If you're wasting a lot of PP in the beginning, you're not even going to be able to get that far especially after like the really the third slash fourth boss it's very easy i was running out of pp on some of my elf bots just completely so make sure you're alternating with elf bots once you pick up the pokemon that you pick up in the actual event itself for example i was using my fly pokemon too much so my fly pokemon had zero pp my psychic still had like 10 each um if it's possible you want to try to use both alternatively if you're able to. This is going to help you get further into the event itself. My next tip is bringing Pokemon that are actually ready to go. And what do I mean by that? Pokemon stats carry over. Natures, EVs, and IVs. All of these are carrying over if your Pokemon are not built up properly, even though the level doesn't necessarily matter, you're really going to be hurt in the run. Because, for example, let's say your speed IV is really low, and maybe your EV train isn't done either. Now, you're probably going to get outsped by the enemy elf bots. If you're relying on Water Spout for Blastoise, you're not even going to be able to use your move, which is a pretty big problem. The items are also pretty important. I really haven't decided what the best ones are. I was just using like my basic gym run Pokemon, such as Choice Specs, Choice Band, etc. The Pokemon that you actually choose is very important as well. We're still working out what the best solution is, but I've noticed that Blastoise works really well with Water Spout, obviously. Typhlosion works really well. With Eruption, you can also Helping Hand with the Elf Bots, which is pretty helpful. 
because it pretty much guarantees that Typhlosion and Blastoise will 1KO pretty much any team that isn't resistant against them, which is really helpful. I was also using Garchomp, which has Earthquake, and with the Flying Elf Bot, that also gives me the option to use one that isn't going to affect my teammate. And I really haven't decided on a fourth yet. I was using Aerodactyl as a different sub for use with Garchomp, but I haven't really decided if that's the best way to go about it or not. I think this is still up for improvement, and I'm sure in the near future we will have some improvements. But for now, I at the very least wanted to give some example mons. I think the big thing is just that you have the 2 times 31 IVs, it's EV trained, and it just has decent moves, especially ones that can target both enemy Pokemon at the same exact time. That's really important. I also want to talk about the rewards a little bit. I noticed that if you get far enough, you actually get increasingly better rewards. I beat the fourth boss and was able to get five Santa presents and 32 Xmas presents. Comparatively, when I beat the second boss, I was only getting like one Santa present and maybe like six Xmas presents. It is worth the time to keep going and get to the third, the fourth, and further bosses because you're going to get exponential rewards. It does get a lot harder and this is where the optimized strategy is really going to come in. Now for the bosses, what you want to do is as soon as it spawns, you want one person to take over the boss and everyone else needs to scour the map for any Xmas presents that are still laying on the ground because you need these items. Items are shared and they are very important to be used sparingly but smartly with your team. I would recommend always communicating with your team on what items you can and cannot use because if you use items that you need and then you can't beat the boss, you're missing out on a lot of money because you're not getting those presents. And this event is a huge time sink. I would also recommend that because points are shared, if you think that you are in danger of fainting, as in you cannot do any more battles 100%, if you do, you are going to lose. You need to get to a place that is safe and you need to stop fighting. Because if you just go into a battle, either by accident or whatever, and you faint, not only are you not there to help your team if you get more healing items, from my understanding, if you faint, you will no longer get additional rewards if your teammates are still fighting stuff. If you faint and then your team defeats the fourth boss, you're not going to get any of those rewards for that fourth boss. You're only going to get rewards to the point that you fainted. My point stands, try your best to not end up getting out of the game. It's going to be just a big waste of time and it's also not going to help your team at all because you're not going to be there to actually help them and then the run's going to go slower because there's less of them as well. That's all I can think of to share so far for this event. I know there is definitely more that we can add. For now, I'm going to leave it at that. If you have any suggestions about the best way to tackle this event, please leave them in the comments below. I would love to hear them to try to get more improved runs. We're still waiting for really anyone to post any semblance of guide similar to how we had one during the Halloween event. I think it's definitely going to be a lot harder because you're reliant on a team, and I think that's what makes this event so hard. I think if this event was made for and tailored to solo, it would probably be easier. That's all I have for you today. I hope you enjoy this event. I look forward to trying to improve these runs. I'm hoping that the money stays worth doing them, because it feels kind of wasteful to just do gem runs during the Christmas event. It's not really something I want to do. If you found this video helpful and you haven't subscribed yet, you should. I make a wide variety of Pokey MMO content.